Hi, I'm Artist Wodehouse and I'm sitting in front of my 1864 American built melodeon. The melodeon was a keyboard instrument that was invented in America and became very popular in the pre-Civil War period and even beyond. It was created by two makers in Buffalo, New York in the 1830s, but became so popular that there were many manufacturers that picked up on it, and these instruments were distributed all out throughout the country in small versions and large ones with even two sets of keyboards stacked up on top of each other. What is a melodeon? It's basically it's very similar to an accordion. It's got metal reeds that are sounded by airflow. The airflow, instead of being pumped with your arms, as an accordionist does, your right foot pumps this leather. Right here, right here. And when you touch a note, there's a corresponding reed tuned to that pitch. Here's middle C. And it sounds. Now, melodians often had another capability, which is controlled by your left foot. There's a little lever here, and while it's sitting there now, it's actually a shutter that covers the reeds. So you have a somewhat muted sound. Quiet. But when you press it down, and I'll try to pump with the same amount of air. You can see it's much louder. So when you get used to the melodeon and learn how to foot, foot pump easily, you can control your dynamics on this instrument to create some measure of expression using your foot pumping ability coupled with the use of the swell shade, which I will show in my demonstration repertoire. My melodeon is not a cheap one, uh, but melodeons as a general rule were much cheaper than pianos in that period before the Civil War. And that accounts for a lot of their popularity. The second thing is that melodeons don't require the same upkeep that pianos do. Pianos should be tuned at least twice a year if you want to have it reasonably in tune. And there are mechanical adjustments to the piano that are very complex. The melodeon, once the reeds were tuned by the manufacturer, they could stay tuned for many, many years, so you didn't require a tuner. And the mechanism, the playing mechanism, is much simpler than the piano. So melodeons were very popular for those reasons, and also the melodeon was portable. So you could carry it around with you. Some of the melodeons had legs that flipped under, and they were truly portable. So they were very useful, versatile instruments. Now my melodeon has that basic sound that corresponds to piano pitch, that being middle C and so forth. But it has an additional set of reeds that were tuned an octave higher. So when you play middle C, pulling this set, you get a very high sound. And see how high up it goes. It's very high. Now, I don't believe they created this secondary set of reeds just to play those little mouse-like tones, but rather, this is a very useful set of reeds to play along with a primary set because you get a great deal of sound coming out. It's rather brilliant. So, of course, the melodeon was a very good instrument for leading small congregational singing, and that was its primary use. However, the melodeon was also used extensively in homes for entertainment purposes, for accompanying singers 
in Stephen Foster songs and others uh, for playing dance music, for dancing, social dancing, and for listening, for pure enjoyment, and also for playing these truncated arrangements of the emerging classical music coming from Europe, especially opera music. And you found those in anthologies, many, many anthologies. There was so much music being published in the United States, and a lot of it was for melodians. And this music was simplified, yes, but it was one way that the population in the United States became acquainted with European art literature. So I'd like to start what I play with a, a really a clever little arrangement of La Donne et Mobile from Rigoletto by Verdi. Verdi's opera Rigoletto was premiered in 1851 and this little arrangement is in an 1869 anthology. Very well done because the persons doing the arrangement, which were these the Lowell Mason and his brother, that's a name to remember, realize what the, the limitations of the melodian are, which is you can't play a lot of notes at one time. And also, you can't play rapid running passage work on the melodian very effectively because it takes a while for the reeds to speak. And you can't expect the bass notes to come on at the same time as the treble notes because the bass notes are being played by long reeds that take a while to speak and the higher reeds are shorter and they come on more quickly so you have to gauge where to put your materials so there's not that tremendous discrepancy in speaking speed of the reeds. So here is this little arrangement of Rigoletto. As I mentioned before, the melodeon is just great for accompanying dancers. There's a characteristic feature, however, of the melodeon that it can't it can sustain bass notes like the piano. The piano has a sustained pedal, so it holds the bottom notes. The, the melodeon can't do that, so you have to with your fingers, especially when you've got a um pa pa pattern in a waltz, you have to hold that bottom note longer and sometimes that's not always possible but nevertheless you can play a lot of dance music pretty effectively if it's not too fast on the melodeon. So here is this little dance piece by Charles Delbert. It's a, a section for, from a little waltz that he composed. It was actually for the piano but 
much piano music was played on the melodeon, and Charles Dalbert's music, he was a dancing master by the way, is perfectly adaptable for the melodeon, and it was very popular in the United States. Finally, as I mentioned, the, the melodeon was used in religious services as for leading congregational hymns. It was a substitute, obviously, for the, for the pipe organ in small churches. And melodeons were everywhere, in small churches, rural churches, throughout the United States during the melodeon's heyday. Now, during the that period before the Civil War, there were there were these these cyclical uh, religious revivals going on uh, that were really all across the United States, and there were camp meetings and also meetings in small churches, etc., that required a kind of music that was simpler, direct, more foursquare that would be part of these revival meetings. And a number of American composers of hymns came to the rescue and wrote that kind of hymnology. One of the most famous was Lowell Mason. And the piece I will play is called Missionary Hymn. It had many different words that were used to the same tune that uh, Mason wrote. I think one of them is from Greenland's I see mountains, you might know it from that, but you'll probably recognize this hymn, it's being sung even as we speak in all the Protestant denominations. So here is Missionary Hymn by Lowell Mason, it was written in 1829, but was part of every hymnal that was published in the United States during that period. Mm -hmm. 